Hi guys, I have a bunch of names in this little name drawers and I decided to do a writing video today because I just got back from camping. Does not sound as fun as it is this is not as fun as it sounds. Anyway, so I decided to do a writing video because I finally finished the third and not final, the second to last book in the Hooded Capes Quartet. I literally rejoiced, almost cried when I finished this this book and I literally do not have the words to describe how much I am excited about this. So I did not write a couple names down, but the names that I do not write down, I will talk about it. So it's basically the concept about the story is this girl named Ashley Wood It is a sketch artist. Her parents are known heroes. Um, her mother more so her, than her father. She doesn't really know that her father is a hero until, like, it's too late and shit goes off the walls. And she's a sketch artist for Heroes and Villains, meaning she sketches them for a living. And, and she has, like, this bat woman cave where she does, like, war walls to, to, to like, investigate her own feelings about certain villains and certain heroes and such. One day she is in a convenience store getting some name brand supplies and she is learn figure out that the place doesn't look as good as it should. Everything's like fucked up. And the next thing she knows, she's like fighting off this gigantic man with words all, all over his body and his face messed up and he's big and he's like taking her soul. And then this mysterious latex wearing hero wannabe saves her. And the story kicks off from there. The world is when like heroes are missing. And it, you kind of figure out what happens to the heroes, Ashley's, you know, state of being from being invisible to being known. And I've always wanted to write hero books. And yes, it does involve some of the characters of The Incredibles, but not in the way you think. So let's just start getting names. Okay, let's get a name. Let's get a name. So we have Rupert. Rupert, Rupert is a minor, come on, Bye bye Rupert is a minor character in the Hooded Capes Quartet. He comes in the second book of the series called Timeless and Void. And he works for the, the sect, which is an organization that experiments on villains and heroes and kind of fucks with the DNA. And I can't say much about him because currently he's not alive. Moving on. Also, this is no cuts, just continuous. Then we have Reyna Salazar, whose name originally was not Reyna Salazar. I can't think of her name right now, but it was not originally Reyna Sal Salazar. She was a person that Ashley considered someone of her stature, meaning that she was normal like Ashley was normal and it turns out not not at all the way she also is affili affiliated with the sect and divine and she's also dead so but she also like she's gonna come back around in the spinoff series that I have planned for like the kids in the ser in the series I have planned them she's gonna come back but not in the way you think any more names? Okay, I found something. Then we have Reginald. Reginald is Zill. He is a role model. A model. He is a god. A half god. At least he's a half god. Because when he came down to earth, his main responsibility was to keep divine contained and not go outside the, out, not go outside the confinements of the barrier. Which is not doing, getting, it's not going well. He is currently alive. He is also a member of the Council of Nine, which consists of villains, normals, heroes, 
undefined, all making laws for the world. And he is also the warden of prison, which is like an institution where villains get redemption arcs, basically. And his abilities, I can't really say, but I really love Reginald because he's very well-spoken and sophisticated. He kind of reminds me of one of my characters in uh, Teller and Flames, Taz Keller, but he's nothing like Taz Keller. Let's just move on, because <laughs> this is not a Teller and Flames video. Um, Gerald Harvey. I love Gerald Harvey, especially because I brought him in, like, we're formally introduced, officially. You can hear his voice on pages, on the page. We are formally introduced to Gerald Harvey and Wake and Prosper the Third book in the Hood of Capes Quartet. He is around 14 years old. He, uh, can't say because he suffers through torturous treatment most of book two and no one can really save him because no one has ever been in the location that he's been he's currently in he's not currently there but like at the, the point of what the book is in now he's not he's not there now it's a whole we're not against that <laughs> He is, his ability is pure energy, energy personified. He can, like, manipulate energy, twist energy. He's just basically energy. His family is very corrupted. They are assholes, and they literally put him on an island because they couldn't contain him. And it's like he's supposed to help him, not contain him. But yeah, they're fucking assholes, and like, he's a Harvey by blood, because his mother was a Harvey, but he doesn't remember anything about his mother, he just remembers being on this bridge, and being taken into the Harvey name, and like, knowing that his, Har that his mother was a Harvey, but something happened to her. We will learn about what happened to his mom in the spinoff series. Moving on! Then we got Miriam. Miriam, again, is Rupert's sister. She died, spoilers, and came back to life, spoilers. She is fascinated with blood because her ability is, again, regarding to Gerald, her ability is to mess with blood. And it's kind of weird. It is fucking weird, okay? It's weird as hell. I'm sorry, God. <laughs> cursing on this day but anyway she is very I would describe Miriam as someone who doesn't want to tread lightly on certain things like for instance if people are having fun and she doesn't really know how to she's kind of like Alice another character from a different series from a du duology actually it's not going to be a series because good god I can't but <laughs> She's a different character from a different story, and she literally is kind of like Miriam, but, like, she isn't like Miriam because Alice seen more than Miriam seen. She endured more than Miriam endured. But Miriam, coming back to life, will come to play in the spinoff series. Let's continue on, because we don't got time like that. No, we don't. Then I have... Faye, Ashley's mother, also known as Mighty Eden. She is, again, Ashley's mother. She's Alphonse's wife. She has been pretty much, the tagline for her, if I had to pick a tagline, would be, is it enough yet? Is it? <laughs> pretty much, if I had to give her a literally just describe her whole personal being. Is it enough? Is it? <laughs> Moving on, because we don't got time like that. I have other characters to think about. Then we have Alphonse. What would Alphonse's tagline be for his whole persona? The dead face immobilized. <laughs> Personified. He's literally like, he's an old man 
tired and just done and like wants to protect his daughter but not the best way of protecting Ashley fucking what you know he he mm, look to be like he's that emoji like I don't know emoji he's like if there was an emoji it would be that like squinted eyed brown face emoji that's 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 Alphonse <laughs> But I do enjoy him though. He's gonna be more. He's gonna be cameo, and he's also the mayor now. So like, he's gonna cameo in the um spinoff series. Then we have Atticus, who's kind of important. I don't want to spoil things. Listen, I don't know how much I can say because so much has been told, and I don't want to spoil you because I don't know if you're reading my book. Go read my book. It's completed on Wattpad.com. Go read it. Go read it. Thank you. And it's just so fucking crazy. So fucking wild. The certain things have happened to him and through, you know, him, her. Damn, who's, who did I, Atticus. Atticus, I, he's came into the third book and I can't really say anything about him except that Ashley rubs uglies with him. I mean, is it really rubbing uglies if it feels good? Moving on. <laughs> I can't say anything about Atticus. And no, you will not see him in the spinoff series. Jackson, my Jackson boy. My Ultra Zone. So his original villain name was Gidget. Because he likes gadgets. He has electrical components in his body. He's like a digital boy and I love him. I will die for him. He's sassy. He's like scared but like he didn't want to leave for Gerald and like his rivalry with Gerald is so fucking pure and I don't know how to deal with it like literally they're so cute their moments together are so cute especially when it comes up in the spin-off series especially with him coming Whew. I just love Jackson and now his that he's like figuring himself out and learning about himself. He's like, hmm, I want to be a, I want to try this hero thing out. So he's an undefined, meaning he does not go to heroes. He's not specifically a hero. He's not specifically a villain. He's just undefined. And he literally is called Ultra Zone now because his, his abilities have continue to flourish and he's still learning about himself, still learning things. And I love my precious boy. Uh, continuing on what would his tagline be though i don't know what would his tagline be honestly i don't know if you know comment down below luso blackwell i love luso blackwell she's my girl she's like also like going through some internal suffering stuff she's like eternally like what do i need to do how do i need to change myself and stuff honey you don't need to change anything you're perfect the way you are but she's also in a spinoff series alongside Jackson. Miriam is too, and so is Gerald. Um, and Genevieve. So we haven't got, did we get to Genevieve? No, we did not. So Lucille is the, I wouldn't, she literally had her life swept under her when her father literally died. And then like her aunt died. She barely un, un, tried to she barely had time enough to hang out with her aunt and like get to know her aunt her mom and her are alive but like that's the only people that she she was close to her father and she didn't really know her mom her mom left when she was five so her mom left when she was five didn't leave can't say where she went but i love lucille because like she's as as like all this shit is thrown at her She's like, I can't panic right now. I can't panic right now. Like, I, it'll be time for panicking. It'll be time for crying and all that. And, like, yes, honey, it will. And, like, some people will be like, she needs to breathe. She needs to grieve. Like, are we in the middle of a battle? We can do that any other time. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, we have... Dewey, also known as Legend. Dewey is an alien. He's... Does not really have, uh, hmm, he's not really the focus point because, like, his, pers his, like, um, arc kind of is for him to be a hero in his own right. 
So that's how it was always going to be, but they were always going to be Legend and Ash because they started, like, she started to do what she does because of Dewey. So he's starting to do what he does because of Ashley. And he came to Earth to, to kill her mom, but, like, when he saw her mom and, like, it, it just, it didn't work out. But he will also make a cameo in the spin-off series. Let's see. Then we have Genevieve. Genevieve is a normal. She loves comics. She loves everything interesting. She's very smart and very cool. Um, her sister died, which is Colleen. And she's very inquisitive and she doesn't really... Like, there's not much I can say about Genevieve, but, like, Genevieve is, like, a very smart chick. And she ha she will, like, have struggles, but, like, struggles. She will have many struggles in the spinoff series. Smiling at you, because I don't know what else to do. Gemma. Mm, can't talk about Gemma. Cannot talk about Gemma. Gemma is Gerald Harvey's aunt, though. Gerald Harvey's um, alias is gold, by the way, because gold is, like, energy, and, like, energy is m mostly, like, comprised of yellow, so he thought it was cool. <laughs> I do, too! And then Ashley, again, I talked about Ashley earlier. Ashley is the main character throughout the Hooded Caves Quartet series. She suffers through many, 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 th many horrible things. And I am not sorry. And she and the girl was something that, like, she never wanted to happen to her. I'm not sorry. <laughs> and I wish I could say things about her abilities but like it's kind of spoilers so I'll just say this she meets the baddie in a way that you do not want her to meet the baddie so then we have Jasmine again I have a I have a niece named Jasmine and no that's not like her name literally popped in my head like yeah Jasmine Jasmine is the ex-girlfriend of Robin and currently girlfriend again they are on and off currently on and um everything I'm sorry <laughs> and it's 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 Jasmine is very smooth and criminal like and she's also trying to figure out herself a little bit more and I, I don't know what else to say about Jasmine. She's kind of a background character. Her brother more so gets the screen light. He gets more of the screen time than she does. And I don't mean to give her less screen time. I just I just don't know. She's just she's Jasmine, man. I don't know what you want from me. Okay, alright. Doctor Harper Hopper. Dr. Hopper was also known as the Threaded Man. In order to save his daughter's soul, he gave up his soul to become the Threaded Man. To appease Divine. Divine did not give a fuck. Use his daughter's ability, his, use his daughter's soul to revive him. And starts a war. Pretty much the Grand Exile War, which pretty much killed all villains and heroes and massacred like Bennett's family and it literally just fucked some shit up. And it, it, he forced his own son to try and kill him and it did not work because he went into his polar world and vanished. And his current body lays in the island and something happens. But I can't say. But Dr. Harper, we're talking about Dr. Hopper. He also helps Ashley and the gang figure out all this information about like how the war began, why the war was happening, and his stress and like how he's he's in the He's in the uh, parallel parallel world that Divine filled, but in a way that you do, I think. 
You will see it in book four, then. Hey, we're down almost to the end, everyone. We're almost done. Divine, just talking about this motherfucker. Excuse me. Where to fucking start about Divine? His real name is not Divine. That's his villain name. Because divined, divine, like he believes himself to be a god. He believes himself to be the center of everything. He believes himself to be the superior being, the superior human, the superior one. He does not care about people who are weaker than him. He only cares about the strong that will survive. He made a war to see how humanity will fend for itself and when it fucked itself over he vanished because he couldn't deal with it anymore and he decided to create a plan in order to connect the dots to his own agenda and it worked in a way and it's not good and he his ability so i went into a little backstory little rabbit hole little, little short rabbit hole so i went to watch in game. Now, be in mind, I know that Thanos snapped everybody. I know he had the gauntlet thingy. I knew about the parallel worlds and stuff. But, I created Divine before I knew about all of that. I created his ability before I knew all about that. So it's not my fault. People should get abilities all the same. Like, people have similar abilities. So it's like, I'm not cheating. I'm not copyrighting anything. I'm not stealing. So, yeah. He is just an asshole. He's just an asshole. And it's just, he's Robin's father. Which, you don't, you don't want him to be your father. He did so many things. But, like, he didn't do them. Because he had other people do the things for him. And then, like, he took the credit in the end. He didn't care who had to die. He's just all around an asshole. Like, what do you... <laughs> what do you... What do you uh, moving on. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this asshole. And then we have Violet. Violet is Dash's sister. Dash, yes, yes, yes. Dash, in my world, is not as cheerful and reckless. Mm, mm, a little bit more reckless. <laughs> and, and like, goofy in this, and, and the Incredibles, the cartoon universe, that universe. In the now. He's damaged, okay? He's, he's real fucked up. His whole family died, except for him and his sister. His sister's missing. So, but, <laughs> everyone in his family died, except for him and his, sis his sister. He was at a game, so he didn't really know. He walked in afterwards, like, after everything was fucked. And he just lost his mind. His caregiver is, um, Bob's friend, also known as, fuck. Speedo. Not Speedo, um, Frozone. You know him. Him. Yeah, him. He's his caregiver, and Dash, and Violet, you, I can't really talk about Violet when I talk about Dash. And I can't really talk about Violet, so, <laughs> moving on. Okay, I'm gonna go here first. Then we have Robin. Robin is not R-O-B-I-N, it's R-O-B-Y-N, and he is Divine Sun. He's Ashley's best friend. He's going through a lot of stuff. He's very angsty. Very damaged. I love damaged men, so you know. But he's very, like, trying to find his own pace, trying to find himself. He will make a cameo in a spinoff series. Oh, show. Can't say much about him either. Then we have Dr. David. He's dead. That's all it needs to know about Dr. David. Then we finally have Serene. Serene was Divine's nurse and was Divine's nurse and she pretty much made sure that his organs, his body was living and that he was living and he 
he just messed her up, man. And he he made his son marry her like, in order to protect her. And it just, it wasn't good, man. So I did this video in order to talk about the series and how it's coming to an end. And I have a quick, mm, I have a prequel plan for Silas High and about how they became students and how they became students in Silas High, how all of them met um, the adults and how... Ashley was born, and then I also want to do one about the war, how the Grand Exile came to be, but I can kind of merge the two because it kind of falls in line. Uh, I have a spinoff series planned about Jackson being the main lead, and them being like a group, like a squad, you know, and I have a whole, whole board back there. You can't see it, but it's back there. I have a whole board planned for the series that's coming next year. Because I can't do it this year. I cannot. <laughs> and, yeah, I re I'm really enjoying it. So, see you guys next time. I really, 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 really loved the third book. It was so fun to write, and it's so anx anxious and everything. So see you guys next time. Bye-bye.